when I started to, you know, just want to, I wanted to write something that had resonance with my own family history, but also that might have some broader universal resonance. I started to call out to organizations in Canada that um, deal with refugees and also reached out to Korean churches to find if they had any new of North Korean defectors. And sure enough, there were quite a few in our communities in, you know, Toronto and Vancouver and other cities. There are quite a few. And I met them face to face and they started telling me about this incredible journey they all did because to escape through the North into China, they have to go all the way across China into Southeast Asia to find safe haven finally in a third country. So it's a 3000 mile journey. And so I heard about this and I began to learn about this whole international network of people like churches and NGOs who are helping North Koreans at various stages of their escape. I also learned about human smugglers who North Koreans often pay. And these are the people who ferry these people across borders and also through countries safely. So these people are undertaking a risk to get the North Korean defectors out, but at the same time, they're charging these defectors money uh, to, to get out. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a morally ambiguous profession to be a human smuggler. I mean, if NGOs and governments were doing their jobs, I don't think we would need human smugglers, but because there's so many people falling through the cracks, these people find a need to work with human smugglers. And the more I heard about how these smugglers called brokers, are helping North Korean defectors, the more I wanted to start to meet some and to, to uh, find out more about how they do their work and how many people they're helping. And sure enough, I met this one smuggler named Dragon who had a tracksuit, one of those shiny tracksuits with like three cell phones. And I don't know if you can trust anyone with more than one cell phone, but he had three. And, uh, and he so was saying how he used to be in Kim Jong-il's army and everything and how he defected. And then after he defected, he was helping others defect ever since. And I didn't know whether I could trust him as much as I could throw him. But there were other defectors I had spoken to who said he's the one who got me out. And they vouched for like not only his, his trustworthiness, but also how talented and formidable he was in terms of guiding people through China. The experience of like having to leave your homeland and whether it, your family came as an immigrant family or as a refugee family, uh, you know, clearly as an immigrant, there's a, there's definitely an act of choice there, but, and, uh, but in, in both cases, um, there's a feeling of longing and a feeling of exile, longing for the home country that once was and mm -hmm feeling of never being <clears throat> able to go back. <clears throat> so that's something that really uh, is a feeling that I want, I hope that a lot of people can resonate with when they read this, whether their parents are immigrated or they've immigrated or their grandparents have immigrated. The sense of maybe our, our past, our own personal and familial histories have points of dislocation or, or truncation that, you know, it's, it creates senses, a sense of longing and um, mystery, in fact. It's interesting because Korea is called Hanguk, and so the word Han, Kuk is country, and Han is the, the name of the country for Korea. And Han is actually a word that says bitterness, or means bitterness or longing. And um, I, you know, there's something about that that's common in Korean culture. So if anyone's watched um, Squid Game or Korean soap operas, you'll know that there's a lot of like, there's a lot of extreme despair or desperation in some of the, you know, the Korean programs. And part of that is, is it's partly in their nature. I mean, there's a lot of great Korean comedy and music as well. Seems convenience is my world. It has been my world. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Kim's convenience. So, so there's great comedy too. But um, that that feeling of Han is something that I think um, that's that I feel uh, inside. Me.